Hi, this is Arnav. Uh, welcome to another episode of Refactor. And uh, today I'm going to be discussing a topic that's a question that gets asked a lot to me when I'm teaching, which is the choice between uh, front-end and back-end engineering. Um, so how most programs, let's say, in a college is designed or how, let's say, we teach at Scalar as well is people are first learning to code, doing data structures, algorithms, learning a little bit about how to structure their code better, object-oriented programming, functional programming, uh, low-level design of code. And, and after that, uh, like, like I'm talking about people who are just beginning to code and who have just gone through this, that's when they decide that, okay, do I want to build a career in backend engineering? Should I pick up a tech stack like Spring Boot in Java or Django or Node.js and then, you know, make APIs, make servers? Or should I go for front-end engineering, working on websites, um, learning React or Angular, Vue.js, any of these things? That's what most people think that that's what this choice is about. Um, so I will try to break this down into a few things. Number one, this is, uh, first of all, a false duality. So it's not like these are the only two options that you have when you're doing uh, software engineering. Uh, if you look at the field, if you look at uh, experienced people in the industry, you will see that there are a lot of other roles, for example, uh, people working on DevOps, uh, site reliability engineering. There are people who are sysadmins who are taking care of the entire infrastructure. So that's another set of roles that exist. Uh, there are people who are working on uh, data engineering, who are working on creating data pipelines, creating data lakes. Then there are people who are working as machine learning engineers as well. Even on front end, for example, it's not uh, all types of front end, all types of work on the client space is, is not the same. There are people working on uh, mobile apps, there are people might be uh, working on um, audio related clients, like you, know, you have uh, Amazon Echo or Google Home kind of devices, there is uh, Apple TV, Android TV. So there's, the, the field is wide. The field is not that you, know, you have to take either front end or back end and be done with it in your life. That's one. I'd like to clear a couple of myths as well. Uh, so there's one myth is that uh, front end engineering does not pay as much as back end engineering. There has been much written about it. Like if you go and search about it, you will find articles which, which talk about this myth. There are articles which break down this myth. To talk about the reality, I would say that, you know, if you find a, a very good front-end engineer, like let's say leading a project, compare them with the salaries of a very good back-end engineer leading a project, you will not actually find any discrepancies. It's not that front-end engineering roles are uh, only for juniors, easier to hire, going to be paid less than back-end engineers. That's not going to happen across the board, okay? Uh, what does happen is sometimes people who do not yet have uh, the ability to understand how databases, how large-scale systems, distributed systems can work, but they have a basic idea of uh, web development, making websites, can get hired as web developer roles. Those roles might be a little less paying than a proper software development engineer role, and that might create this image in people's minds that front-end engineering is a lower-paying job field than back-end engineering, which is not the case. The second myth uh, which I have seen is that people think that uh, career growth uh, in, in the software engineering ladder is going to be either slower or going to be limited if you are in the front-end engineering space. And uh, whereas if you go to back-end engineering space, there is uh, the ability to rise up the ranks as, as lead engineer, a principal engineer, staff engineer, and then uh, you know become CTOs of companies and all, which is not possible if you are in the front-end engineering world. Uh, again, that's uh, not exactly correct. So uh, one thing, that is the reality is that there are a lot of front-end uh, stacks and a lot of front-end technologies which have evolved very rapidly over the last, uh, I would say, five to seven years. For example, 10 years back, websites were not getting built in React everywhere, but now they are. In, in mobile stack also, things have evolved very rapidly. Uh, languages, for example, earlier it was just plain HTML, JavaScript, CSS. You write your JavaScript file and you import it in HTML from there to... Uh, using bundlers like Webpack, using languages like TypeScript. The ecosystem has changed a lot. So today, the technologies that are used in the front-end ecosystem, if you look at them and you try to find somebody who is 15 years experienced, let's say I try to find somebody who is 15 years experienced in JSX and React and TypeScript, I won't be able to find because these technologies itself are not 15 years old. That might give me uh, a bit of a misunderstanding that, you know, if I go and look for uh, people with 10 years of experience, 15 years of experience in Python, I will find them. If I try to look for that in Java, I will find them. In C++, I will find them. But React, I can't. So maybe there is no way to become a 15 years experienced React engineer and there is no growth there. 
But the reality is that this field, like React itself, is a new technology. That's another reason why this myth exists. So now, once these myths are out of the way, uh, once we are clear that, you know, it's not like you're limiting your career or your, uh, or, you know, financial growth, all of these things by picking one of the stacks. Let's discuss how do you go about picking this, right? So first of all, what's really important is that, see, people who are going to be uh, the people who are going to grow a lot, people who are going to be the leaders in a certain field are always going to be people who actually love doing it, right? So if you're in a field, let's say you pick a mobile development and there is a person, another person at the same company working in the same role as you and they can't go to sleep at night if they have not worked on a mobile app every day and, and you don't really like it. You feel like I want to do something else and this is just I'm doing because it's my job. Obviously, they will grow faster. They will learn more things because they really love it. So, Pursuing something that you really love is more important uh, in terms of career growth as well, because if you do that, then uh, you will be spending more time with it, be wanting to learn more about it, and that way you will grow, right? So the best way to sort of figure this out, I generally advise people is that, how about you go and try to make a front end app, anything, let's say, you know, there's some um, COVID uh, databases available for every country pull that data from an API and make an app which shows COVID graphs, you know, uh, COVID cases across countries. Or, or uh, there are, there's an API available uh, from uh, MovieDB, which shows all movies and which stars have acted, what's their rating and all of that. Using that, maybe make a uh, next movie uh, watching recommendation app kind of a thing. A bunch of ideas, right? And there are a lot of ideas. And then if you just Google app ideas, you will find a lot of people have made lists of, you know, these are app ideas that you can make. So try building that, take a week and try building that. And then again, also take a week and try building, let's say an API. Let's say I want to build an API for uh, a blogging app where people can you know, create accounts and then they can um, write articles, comment on articles, follow each other's articles, something like that. Or let's say I try to make a clone of Twitter, just the API, not the front end, just the API of it, storing some tweets, re uh, retweeting, resharing, all of these. Try building that API for, uh, for, for a week or so. See what is, uh, which field really uh, kept you up at night, like when you're working on that API project versus when you're working on the web project. Which one was uh, really keeping you up at night? Which one uh, you could not just stop working on because you felt like, okay, I will add the next feature, the next feature. Which one uh, did you really feel like even till the end of the one week that, okay, I have not done it the best possible way. I can improve this, I can fix a few errors. Um, which is the, the field that actually drew out your passion. Find that out and then follow that, right? That way you will be basically picking up something that you love and that's how you will actually grow in that field uh, faster than if you had picked the other one, okay? That said, uh, just to give you an overview of what are the kind of things you need to also learn and, and uh, to give an overview of uh, which one you might like. So for example, if you go into backend engineering, which is basically working on the servers, uh, working on the services which talk to each other on the backend, creating the APIs. In this space, uh, the things that you would need to work on a lot are gonna be understanding how databases work, how data is actually stored, uh, SQL databases, no SQL databases, which ones to pick uh, in which kind of condition. Then uh, you'd also need to know a little bit about how basically servers uh, are deployed, how to make sure we can monitor the servers are up at uh, all the times. If they're not up, how can I, you know, uh, restart the server? How can servers talk to each other? They might talk to each other directly with HTTP requests. They might make, you know, RPC calls. Uh, there might be a, a queue between them, uh, like Apache Kafka kind of a thing, which is an event-driven queue between them. How to connect the servers together who talk to each other like this. These are some things that uh, you might need to, uh, you know, learn uh, in your, career as a backend developer, right? Then um, if you're working on front-end engineering, then the set of things that you need to learn are gonna be a little different. So first of all, you would need to have an eye for design a little bit because you're working on the interfaces that the users are gonna be interacting with. Having a basic good, uh, what is called a design taste. So even if a designer does not give you the, the sort of mock-up uh, what to build, even if you build something on your own, and, and show it to 10 people, do they appreciate uh, what the UI looks like? Do they appreciate your taste of colors and all? If that's not happening, you might need to work on that a bit because as a front-end engineer, you are somebody who also takes some of the design calls, who also contributes to designing the user experience. And you need to have a good understanding of how the users 
use the particular interface, you know, by putting a button at a wrong place, it might be difficult for the users to actually press that button, they might not be pressing it. Uh, how do you make it more visible so people actually go and click that button? So all of those things are something that you uh, do need to learn. So if this is something that interests you more then maybe front end engineering might be uh, your cup of tea. I think that gives you a fair bit of understanding as to what uh, lies inside the back end engineering and front end engineering world. And at the end of the day, like I said, take the decision based on trying both out and see what you really like. Hope that helps you uh, take a choice between front end and back end engineering. And uh, while ending this video, I'd also like to give you the message that, you know, there are a lot of other fields. You should also uh, check them out. It's not just you have to decide between these two. Thank you for watching this video. And if this information was something that you liked, please feel free to like and share this video, subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. Thank you.